absolutely gorgeous afternoon at Miller Park in Milwaukee where the roof is open. And it's game three between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Milwaukee Brewers. Game one Tuesday night went to the Cardinals, setting the tone in game one. Ryan Ludwig with a home run, a three run shot. Colby Rasmus a triple away from the cycle and the Redbirds would roll. Last night only four innings from starter Todd Wellemeyer. The future Hall of Famer closed it out. Trevor Hoffman and Milwaukee would take a hard fought win in game two. Sets the stage for this afternoon in game number three. That's Al Roboski. I'm Dan McLaughlin. And here we go again, Al, that uh, highly contested tight bunch inside the Central and now a battle for first place. That's right. It's either going to be a two-game lead for the Cardinals or they'll be tied with Milwaukee after this one. So let's hope it's a two-game up. Well, we talk about it all the time. The keys to the season, in many ways, the key to today, hitting in front and behind of Albert Pujols. Game one, they did it. Game two, they did not. That's right, because Albert's been really silent in this series only one hit in game one and then last night his nemesis is Jeff Supon. Supon has had given more at bats to Albert without a home run than any pitcher in the National League. He was 0 for 4 in the night. And 0 for 3 against Supon. so Soup did his job against Albert Pujols and so far so good they've held him in check. Now you take a look at the starters today. You've got one guy that needs run support. That's Joel Pinheiro. Nine losses already this season, but really he's pitched much better than that. Pitched very well. The nine losses lead the National League, but with any kind of run support, and particularly late, he would have another four or five wins. So you just hope his sinker is working. And Manny Parra comes back from the minor leagues. He was sent down, made four starts. They're not even sure if he's quite ready, but out of necessity, he's back here at the Major League level, and he has pitched well in two outings against the Cardinals this year. So we're going to find out. Manny Parra, the lefty, and the righty, Joel Pinheiro. Yachty is in the lineup. The big game is next. Starting lineups and our first pitch coming up on Fox Sports Midwest. Baseball from Milwaukee on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser Select, full flavor, 99 calories, the exception to the rule. By Steak and Chick, famous for steak burgers. By Auto Tire, for the lowest prices in town, we shop the competitors so you don't have to. And by Chevy, see your Mid America Chevy dealers or shop and compare at SDLChevy.com. Little catch outside the ballpark. You make your way in. The roof is open here at Miller Park in an absolutely gorgeous afternoon here on the 9th of July of this 2009 season. Let's take a look at Tony LaRusso's lineup. As Jim told you at the end of the pregame show, not your everyday lineup, but you come to expect that with Tony LaRusso. The shortstop is Brendan Ryan. He'll lead it off. Center fielder, Colby Rasmus. First baseman, Albert Pujols. The right fielder and cleanup man, Ryan Ludwig. Nick Stavano is in left field. The catcher is Yadier Molina. The second baseman today, Jared Hoffpower. The pitcher batting eighth, Joel Pinheiro. And Brian Barden, his first start since returning to the big leagues, and he'll be at third base. Our Marshall Wireless starter is Manny Parra. He's back from the minor leagues and he has a record of three and eight but very good success against the Cardinals. That's right Dan he's pitched twice against the Cardinals and pitched effectively in both of those but the reason he got sent down is he was 0 and 4 with an ERA at 13 and a half over his last five starts with the Brewers and his final start he only went two in a third inning so he has really struggled he pitched well in the minor leagues ERA under three one win two losses and he finds himself back in the major leagues facing the Cardinals in a showdown for first place. We weren't sure who would get the start at the beginning of this series. The big rumor was that Parra would, and here he is. Braun, Cameron, and Catalanato defensively presented by Auto Tire. McGee, the rookie, Hardy, Council, and Fielder along the infield, and the battery today. Manny Parra and Mike Rivera. Those two were actually part of a uh, no hitter in the minor leagues. So perfect they hook game. up. Yeah, perfect game, and they uh, hook up here in the major leagues. And sometimes you try and give a uh, change catcher, maybe change the luck. Worked well together in the minor leagues, and a beautiful afternoon here for baseball and hopefully a quick paced game. A lot of baseball to be played between now and Sunday afternoon. Tony La Russa has shuffled his starting rotation for. What uh, we'll see this weekend in Chicago is Chris Carpenter will get the start against Rich Harden tomorrow, and they'll move Thompson to Saturday. And we've got day games coming up and a day game here. Ken Maka, Tony La Russa, their time in Oakland, and now here in the National League with St. Louis and Milwaukee, respectively. So Brendan Ryan will lead it off for the Cardinals. 
This season, Brendan is hitting 296, one home run, 13 RBIs, two for eight in this series. We saw last night Ken Maka a couple of times trying to pitch around certain hitters in questionable moves, but the one that paid off was walking in Keel, bringing Brendan Ryan to the plate. That was in the eighth inning, and uh, with that, Brendan Ryan struck out, so it was a move that paid off. It paid off, but you know, when you really look at it, the Cardinals very uncharacteristically walked nine in that ball game. Rarely are you going to win with nine walks allowed. Seven times last night, Milwaukee came up with the bases loaded, and they picked up a one-run victory. First pitch to Brendan Ryan. We're underway. A little chopper hit to short. Hardy made an air last night, makes the play. That's how we start the game. With the struggles of Ricky and Keel and uh, Chris Duncan, it's going to be Colby Rasmus that sees a lot of the playing time among the left uh, or the uh, outfielders that hit from the left side. So Rasmus, who's only hitting 189 against lefties, gets the start today against Manny Parra. I think you just throw that number out because he's a much better hitter now than when he was earlier in the season. Tony said by his own admission, you know, you play everybody the first half. Second half, you play who's playing the best. They get the most playing time, and by far, it's Ludwig and Rasmus. And with Stavanoa here, it makes sense with a lefty in the mound to put another right-handed bat. 0-1 pitch. Ground ball hit to second, so good start here, and that'll bring in Albert Pujols. We talked in our Toyota keys to the game, hitting in front and behind Albert Pujols, and really, that's been the key to this entire season offensively. Absolutely. You know, you just can't expect Albert every single day to produce a game winner or do something dramatic, even though he almost does on a daily basis, but only one hit in the first two games of this series. A 338 career hitter and 473 at bats against Milwaukee. First pitch fouled back. Now, this is a guy par on that pitch at 94. We've seen him consistently hit 96. Yeah, he's only 26 years of age, 6'3, 216 from California. And right now, it may be interesting. We saw that Halliday's name is reportedly that the Blue Jays will obtain offers. Some people think the Milwaukee will have the best shot. Backing up Council, called off by Catalanato. Parra gets Albert Pujols to fly out. No score after a half inning. Cardinal fans and tailgaters just outside Miller Park, come on in. We're underway as the Cardinals win one, two, three in the top of the first. Now looking at the Brewers lineup. Second baseman, Craig Council leads it off, followed by Hardy and Braun. Then fielder, McGee. Cameron, Catalanato, Rivera, and Para, the pitcher batting ninth. This is Joel Pinheiro. And Pinheiro, as we talked about during our open, has not had run support, and his record reflects that with nine losses. He is six and nine, but if he has that pitch working right there, he's going to have success. That's the sinker. His number is presented by Marshall Wireless. He throws strikes maybe too many at times, but uh, he's been pretty good this year. Well, he's been exceptional. And you look at June, which gives you an indication. 2.65 ERA in June, one and four record, as we only received 11 runs in support during those five uh, or six May start. And we always talk about uh, the walks. He is first among National League pitchers with the fewest walks per nine innings at just over one per nine. And five starts in June with 11 runs of support. Early in the season, he got a lot of support, so that's why he has a out of 3.7. Fly ball into center field. Going back, Rasmus to make the catch. So Colby was playing in, makes a nice play, got a good jump. He's in center, Stabano in left, and Ludwig is in right. Brian Barden has returned to the major leagues. He finds himself at third base. And the battery today, Pinheiro and Yadier Molina. Pinheiro at one point had eight starts with no walks and allowed uh, had allowed no walks, and uh, as you talked about in May, just two walks in six May starts. So, you know, here's a guy that is inviting hitters to put the ball in play, and with that good sinker, why not? J.J. Hardy. One ball, one strike. Hardy with nine home runs this year, 33 RBIs, and just one base hit in this series, one for eight. 1-1 one, one pitch. 
tied him up on his hands, one and two. Pinheiro actually, right-handed batters hit a little bit better. They're just under 300, but only one of his three home runs. That's another aspect. A lot of sinkers, only three home runs allowed on the year, no walks. There's a check swing, and he went. So first strikeout for Joel Pinheiro. And it brings in Ryan Braun. We started this series talking an awful lot about Ryan Braun and his comments made to the media over the weekend after the Brewers had really been struggling. They started out the month one and four, and uh, Braun was saying, we're not hitting, we're not pitching, but in particular, when we look at the pitching, we're always playing catch up. And uh, some teammates didn't like that, and certainly Doug Melvin didn't like it either. No, and he kind of challenged and said, you know, what the front office needs to do their job. Need to have a big trade and come up with some help. And from his point of view, Prince Fielder, after next season, will he be here? Mike Cameron isn't getting any younger. Braun is locked up, and he knows that as far as right now, the immediate future, this is his best opportunity to win. Now, he is a young player, though. He's got a long way to go. And part of his reasoning, he took full responsibility and said, I didn't mean to call out anybody or wasn't really necessary. I was trying to jumpstart us, but you know sometimes you let the front office do their job, and better off just being a little more quiet. Well, you're you know a guy that played this game for 13 years. Did that bother you with a, a second-year player? This is second full season coming out and saying something like that. I mean, if you're a veteran, when you're I, Trevor Hoffman. That's going to bother you a little bit, I would think. Well, yes. One two is hit to short and taken there by Brendan Ryan. When we come back, the top of the second, Ryan Ludwig leads it off. No score after one. Just a few more hours to cast your vote for the 33rd and final player for each league roster. Go to stlcardinals.com and cast your all-star game final vote for the last two all-stars who'll be in St. Louis on July 14th. Club is winding up the first half of the season away from much of the hoopla back home in St. Louis. And I know a lot of fans are getting excited back in the uh, Gateway City, as they should. Fan Fest starts on uh, Friday, tomorrow. Starts tomorrow, and a lot of activities around the city. Sunday is the Futures game, so Jose Okendo will not be part of the doubleheader at Wrigley Field on Sunday. Ozzie Smith will manage the other side as Ryan Ludwig starts things out with a check swing strike. Cardinals got another representative on the world team. The young pitcher, I think, isn't it? So they will have three as Brett Wallace will be there on Sunday, leading the way for the Cardinals. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Ludwig. Foul back, and he was a guest of Mike Shannon's on our pregame show and uh, they're talking about just timing and playing every day and you go back to when he hurt his right hamstring that was on May 12th when he came back in his first 26 games back he had a 165 average but uh, now he's playing a little bit more and seeing the ball better and Mike Shannon of course on our pregame show if you miss it every single night here on Fox Sports Midwest John Mosellock was also part of the pregame show. And we'll hook up with Jim Hayes in uh, just a moment. And he'll fill you in in case you missed it. And out of play. There's Jim Jackson, the producer engineer. So no balls and two strikes. Ludwig here, then Stabanoa and Yadier Molina. No score, just underway. Ooh, pretty good pitch. Didn't pull the trigger and took a ball just inside. Manny Parra's last six outings, two of which were against St. Louis, he pitched pretty well. The furthest he got into any other game was five and two-thirds at Atlanta. There's a strikeout, his first of the afternoon. So for whatever reason, he has pitched well against the Cardinals, and a lot of that Al may have to do with the fact that Last couple of years with Ant Keel and Duncan and some of the lefty bats that they have, they struggle historically against 
recent history left-handed pitching. That's true. And why you put this all right-handed hitting lineup up there except for Kobe. Here's Nick Stabanoa. He's been quite the, the pinch hitter for the Cardinals when he's been up. He's done a nice job with his 13 RBIs and, and 60 at bats and and really that kind of tailed off. He did a lot of damage early. And a strike to the 27 year old outfielder. Where's number 19. Now, 264 nine home runs 39 RBIs at Memphis. Stabanoa with a high fly ball into right center field. Cameron is there. He's only committed one air this season and he's got it for the second out. Yadier Molina will be the hitter. Had two doubles last night, reached in seven straight plate appearances before grounding into a double play. And he reached uh, in all five plate appearances Tuesday night, three walks, single, and a double. Multi hit games in nine of his last 19. Average up to 288. It'll be good to see a high average by yeah. the time he gets to the All Star game. Yeah, that's what you hope, you know. Probably can't get to 300, but no reason why he can't uh, get to the 290s and stay there. And the way he's been swinging the bat on this road trip, a 400 average and almost five or almost 600 in this series. It see Molina after the first pitch stepped out, and Parra was ready to uh, deliver. I don't remember Parra working this quickly. But maybe that's just the fact. You put him with Rivera. Something's clicking with these two. One-one pitch. I want to thank our crew here in Milwaukee. Always do a great job for us. The hard work that they put in. Two balls and one strike. Two outs and nobody on for Yadier Molina. Always talk about the mound presence and when a guy gets the ball and quickly delivers it, he sends that message that he's in control. Two and two. Hot power is on deck. And how about the job he's done since he's been called up? He's been fun to watch and might as well take advantage of it. Became the 15th rookie to appear with the Cardinals this year. Not quite like Bo Hart when he came onto the scene right here in Milwaukee, but there's a fly ball into shallow right. Catalanado puts it away. Prince Fielder, 22 home runs, 77 RBIs. He leads it off when we come back. on Fox Saturday Baseball this weekend in Chicago. Albert Pujols, Alfonso Soriano, the Cubs and the Cardinals. Fox Saturday Baseball this weekend, three on Fox. Brad Thompson and the All-Star, the only All-Star from the Cubs, Ted Lilly, in that ball game. Here is Prince Fielder. Now 25. Lives in Orlando, Florida, listed at 5'11", 270 pounds. 1-0 pitch. Played in every single game, the only Brewer to do so. And Prince has hit 340, 52 RBIs in his last 52 games. He was seventh overall pick back in 2002. You see the uh, National League RBI ratio with Pujols and Fielder, that Firestone leaderboard, and a base hit. And you got to wonder where Stabano is playing, and I, I know it's Fielder and it's deep, but. That is way out there for an opposite field single. You agree? Yes. Seen Stavanoa in the outfield and everything, and a lot of them in right field, so maybe coming off the bat a little different angle. Casey McGee, the 26 year old out of California. A little concern right now with Pinheiro is he has not had a ground ball yet. He's had a line out, a strikeout, and a fly out. Now the single. They're very pleased with what they've seen from McGee. They picked him up off of waivers from Chicago during the offseason. Last year in nine games, he had 167 for the Cubs. I think right now, because of McGee, if you were contemplating a blockbuster deal, you may include Gamble. You know, one of their prized prospects that was somewhat untouchable before McGee's come on and done what he's done. And you can understand if you're Toronto and you think you're out of the race, this is the time to deal because, you know, one of these teams that feels that they can get into postseason play and the Brewers have been there before with Sabathia, 
you not only get him for this year, but next year as well. Can they turn two out at second on the first double play? Good turn by Hoffauer. 5-4-3 on the double play. But that's the thing, Al. You're arguably getting the, the best pitcher, some believe, in baseball for a stretch run. A guy that, for the most part, is durable, and then all of next season at a hefty price at around 15 million bucks. Well, that's a typical double play, so it was nice to see that they turn it. Tough hop for Barton, and then Hop Power has got Prince Fielder coming right down on him, eludes him, and completes a double play. Yeah, it's it's one of those deals too. Remember, Toronto doesn't have to get rid of him. So you basically you said, hey, all comers, come on to us, you know, and we'll just. Uh, if you overwhelm us, you can have it. Well, here's an idea, too. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that Milwaukee gives up on Gamble and he goes to play third base in Toronto. Now, all of a sudden, you can use Scott Rowland as a chip out there, too. Possibly, you know. And Scott Rowland has a 25-game hit streak on the line this afternoon. Second in the American League in batting. It's the second third baseman with a 25-game hit streak. Ryan Zimmerman, the other. Up there with the league leaders in doubles. Well, he's had a really good year, no doubt. One two pitch, and Cameron waves at it, and a strikeout. Jared Hoffauer, little spark plug at second base, leads it off when we come back. We'll take a break from the heat at Bush Stadium. All inclusive areas. Check out the Champions Club, the Legends Club, or Bank of America Club, and all feature a full buffet, beer and soda, plus access to air conditioned club seating. And tickets are on sale at STLCardinals.com. Also offers to add to that, the uh, labor unions have special nights as well where you can get all-inclusive seating at a discounted price, so check that out at STOCardinals.com. We have people asking us all the time about tickets and where to get them. You go to the Fan Values Corner on the Cardinals website, list all the different promotions and giveaways, and there are some great ways to take in games, especially with the family on Sunday afternoons. Hot power three for five says being called up. It's fun to watch him. He really tacks the ball. Here's a one one pitch and that's pulled foul. He's had a little pop off that bat. Yeah, you know, I mean, a couple doubles. His first major league at bat was a memorable four pitch walk. And then it brought it loaded the bases for Albert who set a record fourth grand slam this season and career record number ten record for the Cardinals and the Cardinals picked him up and brought him up at the right time as he was down in Memphis in the month of June he was hitting 327 he had seven home runs and 20 RBIs and overall hitting 276 and I think he's hitting 340 against left-handed pitching so another reason why he deserves this opportunity here's a one two pitch Bob power out to left field on a breaking ball Ron is there and makes the catch. A really fine start here by Manny Parra. That's seven up and seven down. I have no problem with today's strike zone, but it is much more generous than the first two games of the series. You pitch differently when you have that strike zone. Well, yeah, and, and you know the hitters will adjust to it. There's nobody complaining, but it was when they were so small and tight. And you know, a lot of walks, very slow pace yesterday, much different today. Manny Parra at home is one in three. Away from Miller Park, two and five, and overall his record stands at three and eight, ERA over seven. You wouldn't know it though, watching here uh, early goings. No, he looks uh, very confident, going out there attacking the zone. You know they sent him down to get better command, and he's got that today. Always had the good fastball. He's only 26, and there are probably many clubs who kind of would like to put him in a deal. Here's a one two pitch. Tapped foul and a lot of people have pointed to the fact that the Brewers have asked him to throw his fastball four and go away from a split finger pitch which he likes to throw. He went down to the minor leagues got things straightened out and they said his command was very good in those rehabs. One two. And a strikeout is second this afternoon. Well, see, this is the interesting thing to me, and I kind of fully expected this. You see the split finger grip. This is something they asked him not to do, worrying about his arm. But they sent him to the minor leagues, 
So, I mean, if I'm him, I come back and I say, I'm using all my pitches. And if this is a pitch I believe in and want to throw, I'm in the big leagues, I'm going to throw it. You don't like it? Trade me. That's a strike at 92 miles an hour. Brian Barden, the hitter, third baseman. Ninth place hitter for Tony La Russa. Hitting 238 this year after a fine opening month of the season in which he was the National League Rookie of the Month in April. And we talk about that. Holiday, I saw even a in an article today where they ranked the Milwaukee the best chance to pull off that trade, and the Cardinals were rated as 50 to 1 in the Holiday deal. One and two. It is fun to talk about this time of year. Well, the, the difficult thing is for the Cardinals is he makes he makes uh, more than Albert. He makes fifteen and a half million dollars next year. Here's a two two pitch. Spoiled by Barton. If you're Milwaukee, your mindset being a quote unquote small market franchise has to be if we're in position and we've developed some of these younger players, we know we can't keep them all. If we're in that position to have a chance to get into postseason play, I think you pull the trigger and then restock and redevelop. Well, you you definitely have to be in the conversation. This is a slow roller towards third. McGee gets Barton. Safe. No, he as pulled his foot. came off the bag, and Barton Good call. is safe. Good call right there by Gary Darling. As I don't know if if Prince. I think he was just trying to sell it. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I don't think he had to. As McGee kind of circles, throws off balance. And watch at the other end. He just pulls off trying to sell it. But it looked like he could have stretched out better. So a base hit. There's a look at Doug Melvin, the GM that pulled off the Sabathia deal, which was just about a year ago to the day. And it's always controversial when you make that that deal and then you can't retain them. But they they tried. They put off an offer over a hundred million dollars for him. They have changed that now to an error on the play of the third baseman McGee. So his sixth error of the season, and here's Brendan Ryan. I don't know if I, if you're going to put an error, I'd put it on Fielder. Yep. And a 1-0 pitch. Get out of play. Brendan Ryan with a career high seven game hitting streak. One ball, one strike, and two outs. And when Schumacher's not in the lineup, he's done a nice job in that leadoff spot. Here's a 1 1 pitch from Para. Fought off, slowly hit to second. And St. Louis strands a runner. When we come back, an update with John Mosellock. Jim Hayes had a chance to visit with him. Frank Catalanato leads it off, and we want to remind you that August 2nd is Build a Bear Workshop Day at Bush Stadium. 12,000 kids, 12 and under with a paid admission. Get a very limited edition Cardinals Pup. Of course, it's always a very popular day. August 2nd, the Build a Bear Workshop Day at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals, as I mentioned before, have done a really fine job as far as trying to make this in a tough economy fan friendly to get the kids to the ballpark as Catalanato shoots one foul. Seven bucks, huh? Seven bucks. That's the starting ticket for children. Seven dollars, any game. That's cheaper than going to the movie. Yes, it is, Al. So August 2nd, Houston, 115 with the first pitch. Pinheiro to the bag to get Catalanato and uh, Jim I know you had a chance to visit Jim Hayes with us with Cardinals GM John Mosellock he has been busy and I'm sure he's very disappointed in what has happened so far with the Mark DeRosa deal. Yeah and uh, you could tell Mo is uh, hopeful that they can get him back shortly after the All-Star break but he's not sure and with that kind of injury I don't think anyone can be sure. So for the Cardinals let's wait and see in regard to uh, all the trade rumors going on uh, speculation that the Cardinals are in the hunt for Roy Halladay. Uh, John said uh, certainly the Cardinals would be interested in a player of that caliber. 
but he didn't want to get into specifics uh, about dealing with specific players. Uh, you got the sense that it's something that they'll look into. I'm not sure how seriously they are in the hunt for Halliday. And in regard to Todd Wellemeyer remaining in the rotation, uh, Mo is pretty blunt saying that uh, the Cardinals would look at it, but they don't have uh, a lot of other options at this point. Yeah, Tony very blunt also saying that he is the best option throughout the Cardinals minor league system and big league option. So Todd is in there for a while. Here's a 1 1 pitch up the middle. Brendan Ryan makes the play. And Jim, as far as uh, Troy Gloss, where does that stand right now? Because we've heard uh, reports on this particular road trip that things have gone very well. Pretty well, but I think Al pointed out too, even if uh, Troy is healthy, and I think that remains to be seen, there's a lot of rust to knock off. Players have to go through spring training in order to get ready for the, the season. And uh, so it's a process. So they'll have to wait on him. They'll have to wait on DeRosa. And I guess he'll just have to tread water on uh, until those guys are healthier they have some information where they know what's going to be or else they can go outside the organization. It's my understanding on Troy Gloss swinging the bat well but still having a problem throwing beyond 60 feet. And yeah. if, if that's the case he can't play third can't play third uh, is he a good fit uh, as an everyday player is he no too expensive <laughs> as a pinch hitter do the Cardinals have to move him a lot of questions. Well nobody's going to get him take him if take he can't him play. If he can't play. Here's a 1 1 that's hit out of play. And, and Jim, uh, in regards to DeRosa, you mentioned that John Mosellock said we hope to get him after the All Star break. Was there a timetable at all? Did you ask him? I think he said shortly after the All Star break, it was uh, a little bit ambiguous. I think the Cardinals are a little leery of uh, pinning down specific dates in regard to injuries because it, it hasn't gone well for them. Yeah, and I think it's in his case, as you. Shortly after the All-Star break, you'll do another image, you know, an MRI or whatever they want to do and see the healing process. And so it's all predicated on what, what that reading is. Yeah, he said they would have an imaging right after the All-Star break. And if that was well, they'd go from there. Uh, if not, they'd have to wait and see what the next step would be. So, again, it's a, a big question mark and a very disappointing uh, thing for the Cardinals. All right, Jim, good job. And that's Barton retiring Manny Parra. Colby Rasmus, Albert Pujols, and Ryan Ludwig coming up in the fourth. Fox Sports Midwest congratulates Yadier Molina, 2009 National League All-Star. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. And by McDonald's, better set your alarm. Sausage burritos are just a buck 19 only at McDonald's. Colby Rasmus leads it off, and we head to Chicago after the ball game today. We'll bus there. The Cubs 20 and 27 in their previous 47 games. Soto is out. Dempster's out. Mm. It's not a perfect team in all of baseball, is it? Not at all. And uh, certainly in the Central where there is parity, say the least. The team that, that kind of scares you, you think about the second half, Houston. I was going to say, I know you're going Houston and be anxious to see them up, you know, firsthand to see what they, they look like. And a swing and a miss by Colby Rasmus. Again, it's worth repeating. 189 hitter against lefties this year. And he grounded out to second base his first time up. We noticed first time through the order, Manny Parr was throwing that fastball an awful lot. Really set up everything else. And there's the fastball there on the outside corner. So strikeout and third for Manny Parr. Sal Bando on the, the end. And Sal, a former general manager here in Milwaukee, outstanding player. Used to see him frequently at Tony's Golf Tournament out in California. Here's pool holes. And intentionally walked a couple of times. Right. You talk about Parr really establishing that fastball. You don't see enough pitchers do that. There is that pitch is up a little a little higher than what he wanted to but that's 
it was by design to try and change the eye angle, make that fastball more than one pitch by changing location. You know, it also hurts the Cardinals in any trade. Is like a fine prospect like Brian Anderson is out for the year with shoulder surgery. Popped up a mile high, foul territory. Fielder makes the catch. Well, now you can stay in shape all year with the Cardinals. Sunday, July 19th, Arizona is in town. It's the uh, Diet Coke and Deerberg's exercise mat giveaway at Bush Stadium. 25,000 fans, ages 16 and over, receive this item as they enter the gates. And for tickets, you can visit stocardinals.com. So it's uh, a busy weekend when we return. SpongeTech.com t-shirt day, which will feature Albert Pujols. It's Friday, July 17th. And then Sunday is that giveaway for the exercise mat. Also a family Sunday. And you can purchase infield and uh, outfield terrace reserve seats and get a hot dog and soda. And also, if you bring the kids there, they can run the bases after the game. So a busy weekend coming up with Arizona. Hard hit to third, but Casey McGee is there. Farhart looks sharp. to bring you up to speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewind. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Well, pitching, the story of this game so far is just one hit allowed. And that's uh, Prince Fielder with a base hit back in the second inning, and then he was erased on a double play. What a different uh, pace to gain here this afternoon as opposed to last night. That uh, last seven hours? What's that? Game last seven hours last night? Seemed like it. First five innings did. <laughs> I guess it was about 345, but a lot of walks and and as I said, the, you know, the home plate umpire could have changed a little of that with a little bigger strike zone. And a ground ball chopper towards second base. Hawk power is there. Well, right now, during the game, you can chat with our announcers. Pat Paris, Jim Hayes, Cal Eldred, Rick Horton. They'll answer questions about the game. It's our Cardinals Live blog. And you can find it on our webpage at foxsports.com slash Midwest. And the first pitch to J.J. Hardy is a strike. Right now, you look at uh, Pinheiro, and he has faced the minimum this far. Go back to his start against the Cubs at home, complete game, and then the shutout complete game against the Mets. Terrific, and he's looking like that here today with that very good sinker working and pounding the strike zone. You know, it's the last couple wins, he's had to throw a shutout in order to get the victory. That's how little run support and, and really his margin of error is just so small. But Carpenter is in that same boat. Must be the mustaches. <laughs> Done for good luck. And I'll repeat it once again, Dan. That's the only thing keeping you out of the Cardinal rotation. I, pr I do appreciate that, Al. Yep. If you could grow a mustache, you probably could qualify. The fact I, I can't break a uh, pane of glass, you know, that, that's <laughs> that's probably another well, you know, part I, of it. I'm, I've got you zoned in there because you're below the hitting speed. You know, the, you know what? The major league hitting speed. If I can learn the screwball like Herrera did yeah. with Cincinnati, maybe I'm in. Maybe. 2-2. Two, two. Don't, don't count on it, though. A lot of clubs looking for a finely tuned 35-year-old like myself. <laughs> two balls, two strikes here on J.J. Hardy, and Ryan Braun is on deck. And this is the rubber game of this series. If the Cardinals win, they go to two games above, or rather two games in front, I should say, of Milwaukee and seven games above 500. If Milwaukee wins, they're tied with St. Louis. 2-2. Two -two. Another ground ball. Hoff powers there and makes the play. 
fun to watch, you know, in my opinion, and I know people love offense. It was great watching McGuire. It's always fun watching Pujols, but give me a well-pitched game with strategy in the National League, and you can't beat it. No argument for me as, you know, the beauty of it is, is that as a fan, you're on your seat, you know, maybe you don't see the, the run around the bases, but every pitch could determine the outcome. You make one bad pitch, and the game's over in the well-pitched games. So two outs and nobody on, and this is Ryan Braun. You want to see home runs? Go to the home run derby. And well, I'll be there. You want to see good baseball? You know, watch Pinheiro pitch. Watch Carpenter pitch. Problem is right now is they're getting matched by Manny Parra. And here's the 0-1. Two strikes now on Braun. We have seen the Cardinals, if they're going to have success, and you see the fewest in Major League Baseball, the walks, only 12 allowed this year by Pinheiro. But we have seen, if you're going to have success against Braun, a lot of times it's been with that slider or breaking ball on the outer half, and he's been chasing it or pulling it for a ground ball. Fastball, he has killed it. Good pitch. There's a little slider right there trying to get him to chase. He doesn't go after it. But, you know, with a good sinker, and you stay on top of that, you know, he just pounds it in the ground. You know, certain percentage you're going to go through, but you're never really going to be in too much trouble because the next one will be a double play. And the one-two pitch. Braun, backhanded, throw to first. Oh, what a play! Outstanding play by Brendan Ryan. You cannot do much better than that one right there. At shortstop by Brendan Ryan. Wow, what a play. Had a little practice last night. Nineteen ninety one, Cal Ripken Jr.'s three run homer helps the American League defeat the National League four to two. That allowed Tony La Russa to become the first manager with three straight all star victories. Nineteen ninety one, this state in history brought to you by Schnooks. Tony was, I would assume it was right before that little run, it was when he was crediting Tom Kelly with turning things around and getting that first victory for the AO in quite a while. And you know, a lot of people credit Tony, but Tony was crediting Tom Kelly, the former Twins man. Here's Nick Stavanoa. And the first pitch is strike. Stavanoa, Yadier Molina, and Jared Hoffpower. And Tony agrees it should not count for the most important game, which is Game 7 of the World Series and home field advantage. So base hit by Stabanoa. When he makes contact, it seems like the ball really jumps off his bat. Kind of that football mentality, you know, he just got kind of a big guy and goes out there and gets a good swing on it. Doesn't hit for the power that you would think for a man his size, but as long as he's making contact and... He's been very good at, you know, limited play to uh, driving in runs. Would you bunt Molina here? But uh, you also have to think in the back of your mind, this guy is swinging one of the best bats of anybody right now in this series. Yeah, I've got to let him swing away. And hopefully with Fielder holding him on, he gives you one of those patented shots to the right side. It goes through and hopefully a first and third scenario. I'm not sure the Cardinals have a better hitter going to the opposite field than uh, Molina. No. In my mind, you're, you're absolutely right. And remember, you got off power, and then you got the pitcher spot up. So let him swing. The other thing that made that move interesting last night when we were talking about intentionally walking Ann Keel was that then you knew that Albert Pujols out would hit at least one more time. If you don't walk in Keel and deal with him, there was a scenario that you go and get that out and you go one, two, three in the final inning and leave Albert Pujols on deck. So that was one of the other parts that made that, you know, very tough move for Ken Maka to make. I thought it was very interesting, too, that, you know, after Schumacher got the leadoff double in the ninth, that you had Kobe Rasmus going up there trying to bunt him to third for the... You know, I mean, he's in scoring position. Kobe right now is one of your best shots. You know they're going to walk Albert, which they did. And two shots at trying to bunt, and Kobe struck out on the, on the changeup, but they're not giving him three shots to drive him in. Bowed straight back, one and two. Pop power on deck. Farah has just allowed his first base hit here in the fifth. 
Yachty in a couple of these swings is trying to knock the ball out of the ballpark rather than situational hitting. The shadows at some point this afternoon will come into play. See them near that first baseline and they do come into play at home plate. Now Yachty has two strikes on him. See if he kind of shortens up a little bit, tries to put the ball in play. One two pitch. One and two. Molina first time flight out to right. Centrane trying to hit down on the ball, get that line drive stroke. One ball and two strikes. Leaning at first, not going, and you can see him yeah. right there. That's it when yep. he's trying to guide into right. That's the one that, you know, it's very good, whether it's an inside-out pitch, trying to take it to right, or trying to take the outside pitch and stroke it to the opposite field. But many times with two strikes, it becomes that much better of a hitter. One ball and two strikes. Trying to go inside on this pitch. Will Yachty be ready for it? Here it comes. Too far inside, two and two. Well, that's one thing I've noticed from Parr is he's shown the ability early in this game to get inside on the right-handed batters. Keep them on us by pitching on both sides of the plate. Molina coming off a gold glove season last year in which he hit 304 and now has his average. Around that 290 mark here in 09. Fastball in again. Another 2 2 pitch. Yachty would be the kind of guy, Al, I would imagine, would drive you nuts because he doesn't strike out. You think he makes some pretty good pitches and he just spoils them. They will do that to you. And, and at some times, <laughs> you, you watch him, his swing, it, it's so soft, but he's just trying to make contact and, and put it out of play. And the next pitch we've seen, then he'll take a huge cut and knock it out of the ballpark. Well, and I think he's a little upset with him as far a mislocation instead of being in, it was out away from him. And I think watching Molina's mannerisms, he kind of felt like uh, he had a pitch that he could drive and didn't do much with it. 42 total pitches and 15 have been strikes. Excuse me, 15 balls. Two balls, two strikes. 2 2. Down the right field line and slicing out of play. I was going to say he's pitched a lot better than those 15 strikes. <laughs> oh, Al, I know you've said a few things. You say, wait a minute, that didn't make sense. I've said a few things that do. And a whole lot of them <laughs> that don't. <laughs> but, you know, you've come accustomed to interpreting for oh, me. Oh, I, I know what you're saying, Al. Fastball away. Let's see this pitch if he could take it. Drive it to right. The 2 2. Outside, 3 and 2. And this is turning into a very good at bat by Molina. Only concern in this kind of spot, you worry about the double play off his bat. Well, that's why I'm saying if he, if he gets something, he can drive out there. Fielder's holding the runner on the first. Big gap on the right side of the infield, so something could go through. Change up, which would probably be a splitter. See if they start the runner. Stabano is running, late jump, and fouled out of play. Very tough to get a jump against Parra. They're saying before the game, they believe he's got a pretty good move over to first. Well, the one thing you've got to always remember, he, even if you're given that, you're going to be running on a 3 2 pitch, it's not that easy because you've got to make sure he goes home. So you're going to be a little bit delayed, but. As you mentioned, because of the running speed of Molina, anything on the ground is going to be a sure double play. But not getting a comfortable read from Parry, that runner at first doesn't get a good jump either. The 3 2. In a deep left, backing up, making the catch Braun. Stabano was running on the play, and he's back to first base. Hit the ball well, and. So all you can, you know, you hope for is to hit the ball hard, and he did so just right at the front.
So here is Hoffbauer to fly to left his first time up. Boy, seeing him swing the bat in six at bats. But it seems like everything he's hit has pretty much been the left side of the field. His two base hits have been that way. He said the fly ball out there, a couple ground outs have been in the infield on the left side. First pitch to him. Just a gorgeous afternoon here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Big, big crowd. Roof is open. I used to come here wondering if they would ever sell this place out. I was going to say it's almost like their summer is almost over. All one pitch. And Parra throws it for a strike as he slipped or caught his cleat on the way to the plates. That's it, Danny. And you have to execute. If you stop, it's a balk. So <laughs> he just kind of threw it up there and he gets a bonus of a strike. And Hopauer, by his reaction, thinking, what is going on here? Well, you know, you sit there and it kind of, you get befuddled because all of a sudden you see the guy is balanced and then it was a high pitch and he gets rewarded with a strike call. Nothing at two, the count with one out. And the next two, Hop Power swung on and missed. He strikes out. That's four on the afternoon. Six is a serious number. When the Cardinals score six, you get a 20 ounce coffee, found a frozen drink for just a quarter the next day at On the Run at Mobile. Win or lose, when the Cardinals score six, you score 25 cent drinks at On the Run. So two outs and a runner at first for the pitcher Pinheiro. Joel struck out his first time up. He is hitting 161. Well pitched game so far. Four strikeouts for Parham. He's allowed one base hit. That was Stabano to start this inning. And no walks. Lost the grip. One ball, one strike. Matchups for this weekend Carpenter and Harden tomorrow afternoon. Brad Thompson and Ted Lilly. And then Loge and Wainwright, Wells and Zimbrano. I'm not sure which pitcher would get the start in uh, either game. Now, you would figure that Wainwright would probably start the first game because he's been giving you more innings this year. He's one of the top uh, innings eaters this season. So you go into that uh, second game a little bit better rested for your bullpen. Yes, that, that's what you would think logically hard hit and pass the shortstop party and into left field a base hit for Pinheiro two hits in the inning you can argue that Parr is out there kind of getting a little cute with the pitcher up and you know instead of just executing good pitches with your fastball you know worrying about throwing off speed pitches and giving him a pitch that he could handle through a couple of change ups and a curveball in there and with a 95 mile an hour fastball that he's been locating, why not go with that? Exactly. You know, and you go out there and not that, you know, not that uh, pitchers can't hit breaking balls or they, you know, are going to be sure outs on, on fastballs. But, you know, you, if you can spot your fastball, attack them. And that's hit out of play is Brian Barton. Digs in as uh, he reached on the air by Casey McGee, his sixth, back in the third inning. You get reminded once again how this Cardinal team is really station to station, not much. They don't steal, they don't really hit and run as much. And with other than Albert, is an awful lot of singles hitters. Here's an 0 1 pitch to Barton. the ball with that 93 mile an hour fastball there but when he continues to pitch inside like that get hitters conscious of it they can't protect both sides of the plate so you get them in off the plate get them out of the way back inside breaking ball just freezes him and the count now with a ball and two strikes
one two pitch to Brian Barton. Two strikeouts in the inning, five in the game, midway through five, and there's no score. Got a pitcher's duel here in Milwaukee, and let's take a look at our AFA trivia question. Name the only brother's battery in an all-star game. Give you a hint. St. Louis brothers Mort and Walker Cooper back in the 1942 Cardinals. Here's some of the old timers talk about that brother's combination with friends. Breaking ball here from Pinero. He's been awfully good. He's only allowed one hit and he's faced the minimum through four. And a 1 0 pitch to a fielder. Hit in the air down the left field line. Long way to go for Nick Stabanoa. And a foul ball. Where how deep he was playing the first time up. And let's go back to the splitter against Brian Barton. Well, remember this is a split finger pitch that the Brewers tried to take away from Parra. But it's been a, a big weapon in this game. And you might ask, well, why would you take that pitch away? And a lot of people feel that that puts a lot of stress on the elbow. I believe that if you throw it effectively and properly, it doesn't put any more stress than any other pitch. And to me, the slider puts the most stress on an elbow. Any pitcher would tell you that. Yeah. So, I mean, some people believe that when you spread those fingers apart, your index and your middle finger, that it naturally puts a strain on the elbow. But if you split, you know, if you exercise. Hard hit. Stabano won't get it. Over to try to cut it off. It'll go to the wall. Fielder on his way to second base and in there with a double. Well, the only two hits by the Brewers have both been off the bat of Prince Fielder, a single and now a double. But if you, you know, you Diego Segui taught me, and he threw a he threw a fork ball. And what he would do is he would take a softball and he would practice stretching his fingers by widening that widening that that split with the softball and if you do that then you really kind of stretch it out and you're not putting the stress on the elbow and you throw it like a fastball so it shouldn't be any more stressful than any other pitch that's only pitch number 54 and this is Casey McGee who grounded into a double play and again as Al told you only two hits allowed by Pinheiro today and both off the bat of Prince Fielder will be a productive out. Hoffbauer gets to it, throws to Pools, and advances Fielder. Brings in Mike Cameron, who struck out his first time up. Talk about a productive out, and this just seemed to the right side, so at the very least, you advance the runner to third with only one out. Let's go back to the pitch. That fielder, an off-speed pitch, out of way, and you know he likes to get those arms extended, reached out, and drove the ball out to the opposite field for his extra base hit. Cameron has struck out 79 times and lines it past Brendan Ryan in the left, and the Brewers score first in this game. First pitch of his second at bat that drives in fielder, and it's one nothing. 40th RBI for Cameron, but he has really struggled with runners in scoring position. You know how you have your middle infielders start running in, but you can see from this angle he had no chance on that well-placed line drive right between short and third. Well, you know, that's one that Pinheiro wanted back. 79 strikeouts for Cameron. You're, you're thinking in the back of your mind because you've been preparing for this start. You know the stats. You know how you want to pitch guys. You're thinking, I can get this guy. This is a strikeout guy for me. Well, he had already struck him out, too. And, and you know what, Dan? There's, there's a situation where a lot of times, you, you know, you say, you know, we object when a guy goes up there and swings at the first pitch. Well, there's one of those cases where you're trying to get ahead with a with a, a pitch and you may not have full intensity. You just kind of lolly popping up there. He was ready for it. And on the first pitch, he gets rewarded. And here is Frank Catalanato, who was beat out. And it looks like the right move was made by Andrew <laughs> Jones in Texas in spring training. So that's how the Brewers were able to get Catalanato and Andrew Jones. Big night last night. Three home runs, which I was thinking the whole time watching it out. 
that might be the worst thing for him because yeah. remember he started pulling off all those pitches in Atlanta when he got home run happy. Very good point Dan because you know after he hit that 50 plus and then it was just like <laughs> you threw him a breaking ball off the plate it was over. Yeah he, he was like he didn't know there was anything from center to right. <laughs> you know, he trying to pull everything, everything out of the ballpark and it just all fell apart in, in Los Angeles and now try to resurrect. And I think this is what 14 home 14 runs now. now but, yep. but as you said all of a sudden you get all those attention because you hit three home runs and you get Homer happy again. And then I watched his at bats after that. This could be two. Brendan Ryan steps on the bag and the Cardinals turn their second double play but it looked like the old Andrew Jones trying to get that fourth home run. Brewers strike first after five. It's one nothing. Hey, St. Louis, which one offers an EPA-estimated 33 highway MPG? Toyota Camry, Honda Accord. Guess what? It's neither of these. It's this, Chevy Malibu. That's right. Malibu offers an EPA-estimated 33 highway MPG, better than comparable Camry and Accord. And Malibu comes with the best coverage in America. Just look at those numbers. Then check out these numbers. Visit your Mid-America Chevy dealer today and check out the EPA-estimated 33 miles per gallon highway 09 Malibu. Shop and compare at stlchevy.com. So much good can come from a game. When I was younger, I was part of RBI, involving baseball in inner cities. It brings kids together, builds confidence, and creates opportunity. And a great program. Major League Baseball proudly supports RBI. One, two, three, RBI! History is in the making with two titles and a card for the ages. When the most powerful man in MMA, current UFC heavyweight champ Brock Lesnar, faces interim champ Frank Mir for the undisputed world title. Plus, welterweight champ George St. Pierre in the toughest fight of his career against the man who's coming off the destruction of Matt Hughes, Tiago Alves. And Dan Henderson and Michael Bisping go to war. Bud Light presents UFC 100. UFC 100 is live July 11th on pay-per-view. West congratulates Albert Pujols, 2009 National League All-Star. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by AT&T. Switch to the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. By Taco Bell. Get a $5 off admission coupon for the All-Star Game MLB Fan Fest now at Taco Bell. And by the Casino Queen Hotel and Casino, home of the loosest slots. Brendan Ryan leads it off for the Cardinals. We didn't talk enough about it, but how about his terrific play at shortstop off the bat of Ryan Braun back in the fourth, and now he's been a part of a, a double play here to end that to fifth inning. Right. He's fun to watch to me. I mean, there's a little jump in his step. He, you know, sure he'll do some things that, you know, young players sometimes get chastised for, but, you know, he's, he's the kind of guy I like to see on your team. His defense is excellent. You know, the average is in the 290s it's been at 300 earlier in this series so, I mean Brendan's earned his playing time 1 0 pitch and he does keep things loose because you just don't know what he may do or say well and he's even told me that you know he says you know I'm the brunt of a lot of uh, jokes and stuff but he said I fulfill a role on this ball club I can handle that other guys can't and Brendan hits it to third, knocked down by McGee, and no play with Brendan's running speed. You know, it's a little surprising though, is McGee really didn't didn't really show you like he was going to try and hustle and see if he did have a play. For the ultimate keepsake that celebrates the All-Star tradition of the Cardinals and St. Louis, don't miss the 09 Cardinals All-Star Yearbook. They have done a wonderful job with this, and make sure you get it. It's at the ballpark. You can also get it at grocers and other retail outlets and bookstores. It's got all-star highlights throughout the years. Number to call. Make a call right now for that all-star yearbook, Cardinals yearbook, 314-345-9000. It is gorgeous. And, Jim, uh, I know you have more on Brendan Ryan, who is such a likable guy. Likable and always stirring things up. The Cardinals' last visit to Milwaukee, he was interviewed by a reporter. Oh. And Brendan told that reporter he saw a ghost at the <laughs> team hotel, the That's Fister right. Hotel, which is supposedly haunted. Brendan was just having fun the with the reporter. But even on this trip, he said reporters are still asking him about the ghost. He was just having fun with the guy. 0-2 oh, now on Colby Rasmus. 
Brendan's always having fun. He's always smiling at the ballpark. You know, Dan, I know that Albert is on deck. And I know Brendan Ryan is has the foot speed to. But you almost like to see something happen with this offense. And so are you saying maybe even with pool holes on deck, a bunt put something in play? Yeah. Get it going? I mean, right now, Albert is, is you know, not Albert in this series. Just one little single in the first game over yesterday. And he's, you know, he's 0 for 2 in this game here today. And a 1 2 pitch to Colby Rasmus. Brendan is dancing over there at first base. That doesn't do you any good. And that's old foul. And you can see the shadows. Yes. They've really started to uh, make a difference as far as the uh, where the pitcher is situated and the hitter and the catcher. And that works to the advantage of the pitcher. I mean, Brendan is hopping back and forth, and if Parr has got a quick move, he could pick him off. That's right. When you're jumping around like that, you 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 can't run. And you saw that era, the catcher up in his haunches, so they were trying to go up the ladder on Kobe. He doesn't offer. Two two, balls, two strikes. Two two. You know, you kind of now you kind of wonder. Only thing is, Kobe, you know, can strike out. And Rasmus hits it down the right field line. That's hooking foul. You know, another factor in what you're talking about, Al, is that Colby, even if he puts it in play with a bunt, he could beat it out. Even if the third baseman was playing in, and I know, you know, you're talking about before when that uh, there was some two strikes on him, but uh, you know, he puts pressure because of his speed on the defense as well. Yes, and you know, just got to generate something right now. And doing it against a left-hander where he has been struggling swinging the bat, not recently, but overall. 2 2. On the outside corner, Rasmus strikes out. Six today for Parra. Spot that ball outside perfectly. And the only thing you can do, like there, is just try to fight it off and just stay up there with just, uh, you can't really swing at that pitch without uh, just trying to protect it. Very good pitch. So one out runner at first. Albert is flight out to right and popped out to fielder. This is where if you're Manny Parra and you see Pujols and Braun in this series, the number three hitters, Albert just one for nine and Braun at two for ten. But if you're Parra, you either deal with Pujols here or you pitch around him and you put that potential tying run at second base, go ahead, run at first and deal with an all-star that had 37 home runs a year ago. Well, we talked about in this in our open today that you know what happens around Pujols. Rasmus and Ludwig have a lot of that responsibility because they're going to try to avoid giving Albert the opportunity to beat you. And so you're going to have to get the contributions in front of him or behind him along with a few others. A 2 0 pitch. Check swing. And he went 2 and 1. This may surprise you when you think about the duos as far as RBIs. Fielder and Braun are first in the league, but then Pujols and Ludwig are second. Not much of that because of Albert, but <laughs> it's all because of Albert. I mean, if if Ludwig had the type of year he did last year, they can't even come close to the 2-0. Pujols, a high fly ball out to left. That will stay in the ballpark. Braun makes the catch. Brendan Ryan back to first. And Pujols is over three. So big, big out there for Manny Parr. And let's go pitch by pitch. And our pitch by pitch feature presented by Chevrolet. A breaking ball that's way up outside. Then it comes back down and in with splitter. Then it goes right there. He fools him with it. And then a fastball, but that ability to get inside, you know, and, and change his speeds. Albert just has been a, a little bit out in front a little bit tardy and they have handled him well up to Ludwig with two outs he is struck out swinging and also grounded out to third a check on Brendan Ryan by the way Brendan Ryan with his infield single a new career high eight game hitting streak 
Ludwig has a four game hitting streak. It's a team last year, Milwaukee, that played so well here at home. Forty nine and thirty two last year at home, and this year they're twenty three and nineteen. You mentioned that they offered Sabathia a hundred million, and that's not anything to sit there and laugh at, but in the scheme of things, not even close to right. what he would eventually <laughs> get. Brendan is running. Good jump, throw to second, not even close, and Ryan has his eighth steal of the season, just two back of pools with a team lead. Very good jump. And he picked the right pitch, an off-speed pitch, so Rivera even threw from his knees. Talking about, you know, his Ludwig has the potential and he's second on the team with his 12 home runs. But a lot of singles so you got a extra base hit is what you need right now. Two and one. Brewers right now in a stretch of 14 of 17 against the NL Central. Which they're very very good this season against. Nine games above 500 in the Central Division. Unbalanced schedule that is so important to play well inside your division. And, you know, with some, I, I believe they have that unbelievable, they've won 16 or 17 consecutive games against Pittsburgh. Two and two. You know, that's where you get hot against one team like that, and that's the difference being the, being the champion. You talk to most baseball people, and they, they don't like interleague play. They say, look, it's fine if you want to go outside of your league, but you have to be playing the same teams and make it fair. And there's there's times just because of the interleague schedule, you know, a game or two can make a difference, and there you get a lopsided opponent even in interleague play. Here's a 2 2. Fought off by Ludwig. I think people get frustrated when you look over the American League West, you only have four teams. Then you look at the National League Central and you have six. That's another point. Doesn't make a lot of sense. How about Texas now leading the American League West? Most people thought that the Angels would run away with that division. 2-2 two, two again. Ludwig chops it to Parra. Who spin, throw, and makes the play. one nothing, Milwaukee. Well, baseball's biggest stars go head to head if you haven't heard and it's the all-star game in st louis next week at seven o'clock only on fox looking forward to it the all-star game on fox pinheiro bottom of the sixth one nothing milwaukee and that's pulled foul the bat of Mike Rivera, the eighth place hitter, and then Manny Parham and Craig Council. I think they made the right choice pairing Rivera and Parr here today. Chopper to short. Brendan Ryan with it. Takes his time to make the play. Well, Pinheiro is saying, where are the hits? For me, not against me. Where's the runs? As hard as it is, you really can't even think that way. You just got to go out there, and your job is to stop Milwaukee. You can't worry about things that are beyond your control, and you only hurt yourself if you do. And with one out, Para pops it up and out of play. Carpenter will be on the mound tomorrow. Will the Cardinals have a two-run or two-game lead over Milwaukee, or will they be tied? One thing that does stand out is when Pujols doesn't hit, this team is stagnant. <laughs> I mean, that's not fair, is it? I mean, it's is, not, but it's reality. Human. <laughs> it's reality. 
but it's so it's so true. You were counting on, on more from Ankeel and Duncan. You were thinking that the DeRosa deal would would give you a jolt. You, you were thinking that Gloss would be available by opening day. Khalil Green. There's another one. 0-2 pitch. Check swing, and he went. And he's not running. A throw by Molina. No. So the ball scooted away from him, and Parr advances on a strikeout. Third strikeout today by Pinheiro. Give an assist to the leadoff hitter, Craig Council, because Parr doesn't realize that he's called out. So you see Council yelling, go, go, go. And the ball got so far over to the Chicago dugout that Molina, by the time he retrieved it, Parr was still able to get to first base without a throw. Don't see that very often on a check swing. They appeal, the ball scoots away, and then you got to run. The Cardinals have turned two double plays today. Council could make it three. Hoff Bauer, Brendan Ryan, first base double play, 4 6 3. Quickly out of the glove of the Cardinals shortstop. Let's turn now to our Infinity Game recap. Final game here at Miller Park and a 1-0 Brewers lead. A pitcher's duel so far this afternoon. Pinheiro has induced three double plays. And he has struck out three and only allowed three base hits. One of those out the bat of Mike Cameron, who's one for two. He's got the only RBI today. And Manny Parr on the other end has struck out six. And Parr has allowed three base hits. One to Ryan, one to Stabanoa and 1-2 Joel Pinheiro. So Nick Stavanoa leads it off for the Cardinals. And the three hits that have been allowed have all been singles. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Stavanoa has flied out to center and also single. First pitch is strike. Get ahead breaking ball that guys are just kind of looking at. Mentioned that Pujols has been quiet in the series with only one base hit. He has had, uh, we just can't stress it enough, so much on his plate when he comes to the ballpark and the demands asked of him from opposing teams trying to get ready for the game and also as we've mentioned, he is the face right now of the All-Star game in Major League Baseball. Popped up into shallow right. Catalanato is there. And uh, Tony La Russa was even saying before the game that he is concerned about Pujols in the home run derby. Well, not only that, but remember with the day-night doubleheader on Sunday. And then to go and compete there, and you just don't want him worn out. He's, he's not going to get a lot of rest in St. Louis during the All-Star break anyway. They need him fresh in the second half, That's no doubt. Most definitely. Molino for two. Yachty is fly to right, fly to left. They have turned the lights on. It'll be very soon before the pitcher and home plate all covered in the shadows of the retractable roof. Yeah, here you are, 2.30 in the afternoon. Not many clouds in the sky, and you've got the lights on. Because, Beautiful sunny day. <laughs> because the roof comes into play. Molina steps out. He's been one of the guys that I can remember today that has stepped up and tried, stepped out and tried to slow Para up just a little bit. One and two. And he has been dictating the pace of play. Well, that's it. You know, a pitcher tries to do that, and if you're as effective as he is, you know, hitters should try to disrupt that timing. Puts it in play to short. Hardy. Two outs. Join in the fun of Major League Baseball's All-Star Summer, and you can bring your family to America's Center beginning tomorrow. AllStarGame.com, 888 Fan Fest, and they've got activities at America's Center all weekend long, and our friend Dick Zitzman of Stan the Man, Inc. is going to be busy as well. That's right. He has a signing that will include all the Cardinal Living Hall of Famers, including Stan Musial at the Cardinal Boeing Cardinal Hall of Fame and Boeing Museum. It's you know that's closed now, but for this, 
The Cardinals have opened it up for Stan signing. There's a lot of others. Reggie Jackson, you know, Steve Carlton. Many of your favorites, uh, you know, Willie be there. So that goes on, I think, from Saturday through Monday, right? Correct. You could call Stan the Man Inc. to find out more. Three balls, no strikes here on Hop Power with the pitcher Pindier on deck. Well, what would that phone number be? 314 965 3000. 965 3000. This is a situation that you talked about like last night. If you're that pitcher, you've got the opposing pitcher on deck. Don't walk him. You know, you want to get this guy here and have the pitcher leading off next inning. It's just one of those little things, you know, I mean, you just got to really bear down on that hitter in front of the pitcher spot. And he walked him. So first walk he has issued. Pinheiro is one for two. He struck out and singled back in the fifth. We will see pool holes one more time. Hopefully this inning. <laughs> now that is greedy and wishful thinking, and I like it. And if we do so, we'll have the lead. Nothing wrong with being greedy, is there? Not at all. And now he falls behind. So Rivera out to check with his pitcher. Raining right back in. You know, Jason Kendall is, is one of our favorites. Been around a long time, has over 2,000 hits, very durable, catches every day. But sometimes, and, I, and just you work better with it with someone else. And just somehow that guy, different guy, you're able to communicate better. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Tony will tell you he doesn't believe in that. Well, he doesn't like to, you know, to, it's a crutch. But if the numbers are there and that pitcher says, I like this guy. Well, I don't think, you, you know, nobody's going to tell Tony who to play. You know, if, if a guy came up to him and said, hey, I want this guy to catch, I'm sure Tony would do the opposite just to say, <laughs> I'm, I'm running the show. Sure. And don't you, you know, you take care of pitching. I'll take care of managing and putting the lineup out. But. Of course, Bob Gibson used to tell Red, he said, Maxie, Maxie's playing. Yeah, I'll hit eighth. You, you put Maxie ninth, but he's he's playing defense for me. Well, think about Maddox all those years with uh, Perez behind the plate. He followed him from Atlanta to Chicago. Yeah, and there's many times where Maddox didn't want the number one catcher because he preferred the, you know, and it, whether it was Javi Lopez, who was a good offensive player, but he wanted the defensive catcher. Here's a 2 2. 7 today for Manny Palm. Time to stretch. What's on tap is presented by Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. Chris Carpenter, 6 and 2, 2.32 ERA at Wrigley Field in game one tomorrow. That all important four game series. Rich Hart, 5 and 5. With an ERA that's over five. Our Bud Light, what's on tap? Ice cold Bud Light. How's that beer get iced down? See plenty of that at Wrigley Field. The Cubbies are off today. And I think that's probably one of those off days that fit, fit their needs perfectly. And a ground ball. Backhanded by Brendan Ryan. Long throw. What a play again by the Cardinals shortstop. He's got some range. He's got that quick release. And he, the way he throws, a lot of times sidearm. You see how deep he's playing. So he's able to get to that ball. And you know, a lot of times he slings the ball over. He sidearms it. So it really does help him out on those plays. This is the play. Couple plays earlier where he made some outstanding plays. There's the second one. Helped in the double plays. Al, I talked to a couple of scouts uh, before a game the other night. They really believe he's one of the better defensive shortstops right now in the league. I think with some of those defensive ratings, it, it translates into that. Another terrific play deep in the hole from Brendan Ryan. Third baseman Brian Barton makes the play and you mentioned how uh, 
Brandon likes to sling the ball. He says he actually feels more comfortable with that. The coaching staff has not gotten on him about that, about being more over the top. And you see when he has to make the play with more throws over the top, he can do it. But he said he's more accurate slinging the ball. He's only made four errors until he, you know, really consistently is throwing that ball away. You kind of let him go and do his thing. Two outs, nobody on. Fielder. And he is two for two with a single, a double, and the only run scored today. Interesting is you're in the middle of their order and activity in their bullpen, so maybe the Cardinals will catch a break with Villanueva warming up that maybe Parr is through. Remember, his pitch count was well ahead of Pinero's. And you better get him next inning because then looming is their outstanding closer, Trevor Hoffman. And Ken Maka said after the game last night, you know, it did get interesting late, but he said one of the reasons why is we haven't used Trevor all that much lately, so a little rust out there. It was nine days. Yep. Which is almost unheard of for your closer. But you got to find a way to get him in some way, somehow, non close situations, but you've got to keep your guy sharp. Most people, you know, most closers don't want to pitch in those non save situations, but out of necessity, they would much rather take that outing or two without uh, being be active rather than not pitching for nine games in, in a competitive setting. Carlos Villanueva getting loose. Cardinals have Barden, Ryan, and Rasmus coming up, and then Albert Pools. One, two. Ooh, just missed. And again, Pinheiro, very effective today with that, that ground ball and sinker. A lot of ground balls after the first few batters in this game. He's gotten three double plays with that ground ball. And Fielder's been his problem. Got the first hit for the Brewers. Then he got the second hit, a double in the, to lead off the fifth. Cameron, who's hitting about a buck sixty with runners in scoring position, delivers the key blow. They've gotten away with that pitch. It's two and two. Prince Fielder last night produced his 77th RBI of the season. That uh, broke the club record for RBIs before the All-Star break. Carlos Lee in 05 had 76. Greg Vaughn in 96 had 75. Pujols due up fourth. Those two will compete in the home run derby next week. And of course, Fielder last night gets the game-winning hit on an infield single. I believe Justin Morneau, the champion from last year's home run derby, is pulled out of this year's home run derby. 2-2. Two -two. Remember Prince in the, earlier in this series had that ball that had all the English on it going down the first base line and it started foul and rolled fair. And I know you talked to him about that situation. Yeah, he's, I asked him, did you think about you know, running out of the box and stepping on it while it was in foul territory or kick it. And he said, no, and I started going there. I, go, I went into panic mode. Liner to left. Stabanoa. Barton leads it off when we come back. one nothing Milwaukee here in game three. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. With just the right taste, it never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. And by Bank of America, Cardinals banking only at Bank of America. Manny Parra lifted from this game after 110 pitches, so you might be doing the Cardinals a favor here. I think you're right, and but you, as you mentioned, you got to get it against Villanueva, who, when Trevor Hoffman was on the disabled list to start the season, he was their closer. So very capable and he did pitch on Tuesday one inning two hits one strikeout and he hasn't allowed a run in his last four appearances. So Chevy called to the bullpen so the Cardinals here to start this uh, eight inning counter with Skip Schumacher. Villanueva faced Ludwig and Keel Molina and Joe Thurston the other night against St. Louis and he gets Skip Schumacher here to start the eighth to pinch hit for Barton. Milwaukee's got to be thrilled when the effort they got from Manny Parra returning from the Meyer Leagues and you know one of the things is you look at the numbers for Carlos 
two and four. One of those wins was against Chicago, another one against the Cardinals. A one pitch to skip. This is slicing down the left field line and foul. You know, Manny Parr got sent out because he was really struggling. ERA 13 and a half and 0 and 4 in his last few starts before going to the Meyer Leagues, but he was averaging more than two base runners per inning. So to get seven innings with only three hits and one walk, that is vastly improved. And his good starts have been against the Cardinals. Yeah. Three good ones now. Curveball misses low and away. Villanueva was signed by San Francisco in 02, then traded to the Brewers in 04 for Wayne Franklin and Leo Estrella. One two pitch. Schumacher into right field for a leadoff base hit. Here's what we're talking about now, Al, if the situation here with Brendan Ryan, who can bunt, you would hope and sacrifice in this situation. That goes up, and on the inner part of the plate, fights it off, the line drive out there, and Cardinals are kind of right now, you like their chances. They got Stetter, the lefty, warming up in their bullpen. Rasmus on deck, you would figure Stetter's for Colby. Yes. And then you'd see Albert Pujols running in from the Cardinal bullpen. It's Jason LaRue. That's why we have a little stoppage in play. And there's a look at their only lefty. Chris Narvison was sent down to the minor leagues. We saw him in game one. LaRue trotting in from the bullpen. And Stetter, the only lefty out there. He's a good one. And he's, he's tough to hit against. So the Cardinals have one right-handed hitter. And that's LaRue. So that's you it. kind of wonder that's going to say that's why he's running in. Exactly. Cardinals by using Schumacher here the left with Duncan Thurston and Ann Keel left on the bench from the left side LaRue from the right side one ball and no strikes here on Brendan Ryan. Got Ann Keel to go in and play defense if you pinch hit for Kobe with the way their defense is here he almost wish he could push it hard enough past the pitcher towards second base right he would beat it out. Brendan shows bun an awful lot, but rarely makes contact. Or if he does, it's a foul ball. One ball, no strikes. Another check on Skip Schumacher. Skip, by the way, has two steals this year. And Albert Pujols leads your team with 10. You're not a team that runs all that no. much. No, you don't. And Rivera has thrown out 20% of runners. The 1 0 pitch. Two balls, no strikes. And at least on the first two pitches, Brendan was not showing bunt. No. And now, as he looks down at Okindo flashing, boy, wouldn't you? You'd love to see a perfect execution of a hit and run. There he goes. Hit and run is on. Out to left center field. Schumacher on his way to third. He's going to score and tie this game up. Brendan Ryan on his way to third. A triple and an RBI. Tied up at 1 1. That was a. I was you're accusing me of being greedy. I wasn't even that greedy. Wow. And that ball just hit perfectly in one of those areas out in left center that it hit the side, it hit the wall out there and caromed away from Cameron, allowing Brendan to have a clean triple. But they start the runner looking the hit and run, and you see that coming off. Now watch where this ball goes as he hits down the bottom, and that's why he gets the triple. So shoes looking at it, balls in front of him. He comes all the way around. Okindo's going to send him home to tie this game. And now the Cardinals, they lost a tough one last night, are in a good position right now late. 
So Villanueva came in, leadoff base hit to Schumacher. He comes around to score on the hit and run RBI triple by Brendan Ryan. Ryan is 14th RBI. And remember, he had the two big RBIs last night on the double. Stetter coming in to face Colby. Here's Jason LaRue, the 35-year-old backup catcher, and our Chevy called with the bullpen as Mitch Stetter is in. The only lefty that they have out there, and now LaRue a chance to put the Cardinals on top for the first time today. Still nobody out. Pool holds on deck. Infield drawn in. So he'll pinch hit for Colby Rasmus. Pinch hit here. You got the infield drawn in. Albert on deck, but there's no way he's going to see a pitch. Todd Coffey, right-hander, got up as Setter was coming in, so he'll have plenty of time to be ready. 1-0 pitch. Two balls, no strikes. The season, one for six against Milwaukee. 0 for seven as a pinch hitter this year. A nice job hitting when he starts. 3-0. Well, here's a situation, and you have to think ahead. If you would walk him here, you'd, you'd have to walk pool holes and load him up, I would think. Or do you pitch to him with two runners on? I, I would think you'd have to. You have to walk him and load the bases. I do too. Either way, you're in trouble. 3-1. Would he take another pitch here? Numbers on Stetter, 40th appearance. It sure wouldn't uh, hurt you to take another pitch and a guy that's unorthodox. Outside, and here comes Pujols. Fans booing the bullpen after the tremendous work by their starter, Manny Parra, gave Ken Maka seven innings, three hits. No run scored. He walked one and struck out seven, and now he will go to the bullpen and bring in the righty. Now, Coffey had been getting loose, and he got Pujols to ground out in the ball game last night in the seventh. Coffee is the right-hander who pitched two scoreless innings last night to earn his fourth win of the season. And Albert is the first batter that he will face. Four for 11 against Coffee, and Coffee a 1.13 ERA over his last eight appearances. You wonder, Al, how he'll respond after two innings last night and now having to face Albert Pools. Again, it's worth repeating. He saw Pools in the seventh inning the ball game last night and got him to ground out to short numbers on coffee the former closer while with Cincinnati for a brief time 41 appearances and his ERA stands at 2.51 well now though he probably hits that same ball and it goes through because the infield's in that's right so inning started against Villanueva. Schumacher with a base hit. He would score on the triple by Brendan Ryan. Stetter came in and then walked Jason LaRue, the Cardinal backup catcher. So now Coffey comes in to face Albert Pujols with runners at first and third and nobody out. And a 1-1 game here in the top of the eighth. I love the comments and I wish I could credit the pitcher who said it, but say when you're facing Albert in a situation like this, if you're a man of prayer, you start praying. If you're not, praying isn't your thing, you think about starting. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty much right on the mark. <laughs> so, infield in and runners at first and third. First pitch to Albert. Inside, pool holes today has walked, uh, rather, flied, uh, fly to right, uh, popped out to the first baseman, also flied out to left. On deck, it's Ludwig. Albert leading the home runs and RBIs in the league. 2 and 0. 
in this situation, now that you've fallen behind two balls and no strikes, what do you think about putting them on? I'm sure Ken Mock has said, you know, go after him, do the best you can, but if you walk him, I'm not, you know, don't worry about it. But a lot of times, he's, as you said, the manager can take that responsibility away from you once you fall behind. 2-0, ripped fair. Cardinals have the lead. Pujols delivers. LaRue on his way to third base. He is going to be held up. It's an RBI double for Albert. LaRue slipped, dives back into the bag safely as Brendan Ryan scores the go-ahead run. 2-1 to one Cardinals. Jose gave LaRue such a late stop sign that he rounded the bag, and then his only way was to fall. But there is an a 2-0 pitch just hammered. And LaRue, watch this. Give me a late sign to stop. And his best bet was to slide and then scramble back. So close the book on Villanueva. He saw two batters, two hits, Schumacher and Brendan Ryan. Those two have come around to score. Now it is second and third, and Ryan Ludwig could deliver a huge base hit here. And remember the way Pinheiro's pitching. He's going to be back out there as his pitch count is low and, and really dealing. On deck, it's Duncan. He'll pinch hit for Stabanoa. Remember, no other lefty out there, so you can go with your lefties here. Duncan, Thurston, and Keel all on the bench. Ryan Ludwig today is struck out swinging. He's grounded out twice. 0-1 pitch. Ludwig with a high fly ball into deep left center field. Cameron back. It's gone! Three-run homer for Ryan Ludwig. And the Cardinals lead it 5-1. Ludwig's 13th of the season, now with 45 RBIs. And these fans are stunned here in Milwaukee. Wow. That's wow. Started talking about what has to happen in front of Albert and behind. LaRue had the big key walk. Albert delivers the go-ahead RBI, and here's a big punctuation mark, the three-run home run, and Tony pushing all the right buttons. You knew at the very least it was deep enough for the sack fly. Another bonus as you get you get two more insurance runs on the three-run home run. Five to one Cardinals, and here is Ricky and Keel. He'll pinch hit for Nick Stavanoa. And Keel was a pinch hitter late in the ball game last night in the eighth. Ken Mock intentionally walked him to get to Brendan Ryan in a move that paid off as Ryan eventually struck out to end the inning. You know, as much as Rick is struggling, and there is a good pitch, he was going to be the one to go in for defense. Sure. Now you pick up his spirits by getting the base hit on top of it. So the inning started with Villanueva. He came in, gave up the single to Schumacher. Then the triple and RBI to tie it up to Brendan Ryan. Stetter walked Jason LaRue. Coffee came in, gave up the double and RBI to Pujols. Ludwig, three-run homer, and a 5-1 Cardinals lead. Not only is this crowd stunned, most of it's leaving. Billy Castro out to talk is Maka. And you can make all these decisions, and, you know, he, he, it's up to the players to execute. And his bullpen, which has been very good for him, is really letting this one get away. Well, Still a lot of time left. There's a couple of things you can look at. At 110 pitches, and you can look at it both ways. Was it too soon to pull Manny Parra with the way that he was pitching against the Cardinals? In retrospect, the answer is easy. Yes. But we, <laughs> well, we were talking, though, off the air. You know, that, that's a tough decision. At 110, do you pull out a guy that's pitching that well? And I know he wants to give him a good feeling about this game, but you're trying to win this series, too. Right. And at 110, by today's standards, it was a no-brainer. You take him out. And and you, you're guaranteed, even with the bullpen collapse, that he feels good about his effort. And something to build on, but well, I mentioned it too. When Coffee came in, you know how fresh could he possibly be after two innings last night? And his sprint in. Para seven innings, three hits. The relievers, 
They have not recorded an out and they've given up five earned runs. They have imploded here. Molina has fly to right, fly to left, and also grounded out to short. And Dan, you just, they're not going to feel sorry for you when they're on top, and you can't feel sorry for them. You just keep on piling on and just send a message. We're here. It took a while, but Pinheiro's got his run support. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Wondering if it would ever come. What a huge win this would be if the Cardinals can hold on and you win two series in this all-important road trip that everyone's been talking about with the uh, three games in Cincinnati, three here with Milwaukee. Well, I, I go back and Tony's preparation for the trip, you know, where he challenges guys at certain points in the season to push it. This was a meaningful trip. We remember we got the last win to set the tone for the, the top 10-game road trip into three of your competitors' home ballparks. But also the fact is, hey, don't look ahead of the All-Star break. We need to win these games. Runner goes and a throw down to second base, and Keel is out. I don't know what that was, but he got a See very there. late jump, and it may have been a miss sign, or it was straight up. It was a very poor jump. I mean, you can't run if you don't get it. It looks in for like a hit and run, but I mean, there was no way I thought it was even a delayed steal with how that ball was in the middle or in the catcher's glove that he was only halfway. Got a 5-1 lead. It doesn't look so important, but that's one of those mistakes you can't make over the course of the year. 2-1 pitch now to Yachty. 2-2. Two two. Importance of this game. Milwaukee a game out. Chicago three games out. Three and a half, Cincinnati and Houston. And a punch out of Molina on the outside corner. Don't say anything, Yachty. It's got to be one of those tough things where, as a catcher, you want to say something. <laughs> you know, you take pride in your offense, but then you've, in the back of your mind, you can't say anything. Well, the only thing you could say is, okay. I'll accept that. You make sure you get that same pitch to my guy. Sure. So strike out for a coffee, and there's two away. You might say it with a couple more adjectives. A lot more. Pop power. Looks at a strike. at that pitch you know another thing too that you, you look at in this game right now pitching to Albert Pujols as Pujols deliver with the double are you better well, off walking him and loading him up and you know we were talking to in the 2-0 pitch you know where many times a, a manager will say okay I'll, I'll let you go after him but if you fall behind then I'll take the burden off your shoulders and I'll put him on So the count is no balls and two strikes. Hoffauer has walked today. Applied to left and also struck out. The 0 2. Bounced in the dirt. Coffee was. Claimed off of waivers from Cincinnati. McGee off of waivers from the Cubs. Out to right field off the bat of Hawk Power. Pinheiro back to work. And now he goes back to work with a four run lead. It's 5 1. St. Louis with a 5-1 lead as Ryan Ludwig goes deep with a three-run homer. His 13th of the season now with 45 RBIs. And this is our prime cut of the game presented by Hardy after that fine line that you've seen by Pinheiro. The offense, that's one of the races we want to show you that. Show you the line of Pinheiro and then show you that big cut and what Joel has been able to do. It's our Hardy's prime cut of the game and a seven innings pitch, three hits, one run, it was earned. No walks and three strikeouts for Joel. So Casey McGee will be the hitter. 
I'm sure for some fans watching the game, you, you go back for the Cardinals in the seventh inning, down by a run. Manny Parr is still in the game, and Pinheiro coming up with a runner at first base. Now, your option for hitting from the right side and pinch hitting would have been LaRue, but as you mentioned, Al, during the break, with such a big series coming up and a doubleheader, and it always gets crazy at Wrigley, you always have to think ahead so Pinheiro can give you some more innings here and you save your bullpen. Yeah, and, and I think you and I both agree that Tony did the right thing. There were two outs there. You know, you, it's not like you've got, you know, the world's best uh, pinch hitter coming up, and he's so effective right now. He's still just at 80 pitches. And another ground ball. Handled easily for the first out. So you leave Pinheiro and you go out there, but in the back of your mind, you know you get that four game set in Chicago that any can, anything can happen to your pitching staff there. So go with the hot hand and right now Pinheiro's dealing. Thurston, by the way, takes over at third base. Here is Mike Cameron. And then Keel stays in the game to play center. Little pop up. And that'll be caught by Pools. Now your question is, and it's not a safe situation, so in my mind, I leave Pinheiro out there. No doubt. Another complete game, possibly. Four outs away. Here's Catalanato and uh, out in left field. Cardinals have Ankeel in center, Ludwig in right. Schumacher, I believe, is, is in left. So two outs, nobody on, and the pitch taken for a strike. Pinheiro has been getting those calls like that last pitch because he's been around the plate. Oh, a, a very fair strike zone for both sides, but it is, you know, a truer strike zone than we saw the first two games of the series. It is amazing how over the, the course of six months, perceptions can change on players. You think about watching Pinheiro and just how good this guy is starting to get. It's fun to watch. Ninth inning coming up, and it's a 5-1 Cardinals lead. Cardinals as we go to the ninth in Milwaukee. Don't forget, coming up after the game on the post-game edition of U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live, Pat Paris, Rick Horton standing by. They'll break down today's pitching matchup. They'll show the top ten Cardinal moments of the first half tonight, moments ten through six, and, of course, player reaction straight from the Cardinal clubhouse. It's all coming up after the game. For now, we send it back to Dan and Al, guys. Okay, Jim, good job today, and uh, we move to the ninth in what has been a thrilling game for the Cardinals now and a stunned crowd here in Milwaukee. And they will use their fifth pitcher of the afternoon. Mr. Smith, who appearing for the 13th time, he's been kind of inserted in that rotation, too, as they're down by a couple. As Dave Bush is about ready to go on a rehab assignment. So Manny Parra, it's fouled back by Pinheiro. No need to pinch hit for him. Manny Parra, seven innings, no runs and three hits. In the eighth, though, a different story with three relievers. Villanueva faced two batters, two runs, two hits. Stetter, one batter, he walked him. That came around to score. And then Coffey finished off the inning but gave up three hits and two runs. Breaking ball, then a strike, nothing in two. How about, you know, you, you know the air has been let out of the sails of the Brewers, but they really didn't make Pinheiro work at all that last half inning. Not at all. Pinheiro breaks his bat, and Hardy can't come up with it. Maybe a base hit. And could be second hit of the game. To me, it should be a hit. I almost would rather him made an out. So he didn't have a stinger. Well, or not, shaking his hand only, over there. Not only that, but I don't want him to, you know, he's already done his job, reaches for this ball here, and it eludes McGee, and then Hardy can't come up with it. So it should be a base hit, and I just want him to be resting on the bench. Still have not ruled on that play, as they have already committed an error. Here's a ground ball up the middle. Council to second and out. As Pinheiro slid in hard. Yeah. 
So that's the first out in this 5-1 game. And here is Brendan Ryan. And still not ruled on it. No, they have ruled now an error. So they'll be on Hardy. And he commits his sixth error of the season. First pitch taken a little bit low. One ball, no strikes. Brendan Ryan very good defensively here today. He's grounded out to short, grounded to second. Infield base hit, stole a base in the sixth. And then the all-important RBI triple now on a hit and run to score Schumacher to tie the game up. Another good game uh, from the leadoff spot. And I guess the only question in the minds of the Cardinal fans right now is they're hoping Albert gets another bat here in the ninth. To Brendan, two for four. Had two RBIs last night. Picked up a big RBI today. Some outstanding defensive plays. Now has a career high eight game hitting streak. And the average back at over 300 at 301. When you have injuries, it opens up opportunities for others, and Brendan really has taken advantage of the playing time and deserves to be in that lineup every single day. And Tony has all but said that too, especially with his defense. That well, was defense would be would do enough, but offensively he's holding his own. Hits it down the left field line. Foul. Always talking baseball, always trying to learn and get better, isn't he? I, mean, I would think that Albert would be the one teaching Tony how to hit. They may not be talking about <laughs> Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody else. It's like like uh, Hal McRae said, so we kind of leave him alone. That's what Hal told me. He said <laughs> he, he knows his swing. We don't say too much to him. 2-2. Two -two. He said, I'll just be ready, and that's a strikeout. Brendan Ryan, if you need somebody to soft toss or throw some BP or look at video, we're happy to help out. But <laughs> we just get out of his way. And here's Thurston with two outs. Smith pitched to score this inning in game one of this series. That was in the eighth inning, and he got Schumacher, Rasmus, and Pools in game one. If something happened to Yachty right here, do you want Duncan to play short or catch? And the thing is, Stavanoa would be your emergency catcher, and he's out. He's out of the game. He's out. And Chris is the only available player. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Thurston. It is amazing you, you don't see more managers use a backup catcher because the percentages of that guy getting hurt and having to be used in a game, meaning your starter, and you've already burned your backup, are slim. And it, 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 Tony is one that always wants to be protected in that area. And if he does, many times he'll keep Molina in a game, you know, play first base, give Albert a rest, but to have that protection. But all you have to do is have somebody back there to finish a game, and, you know, you can re if it's going to be a, an injury factor, you replace the guy tomorrow. For the fans that have stuck around, they want to see Albert swing one more time. He's on deck. Two and one the count here on Thurston. Two and two. Pinero looking ahead will face Rivera, the catcher, then the pitcher spot and counsel. So as long as he doesn't get into trouble, you won't see those big bats of Braun and Fielder coming up. Pujols today with that uh, RBI double off of coffee. He now has 83 driven in this year. Two balls, two strikes. 
with two outs and a runner at first. Full count. I mean, you'd think Thurston would get a pitch that would be in the strike zone. And now Prince Fielder has just told his pitcher on the 3-2 pitch, I'm going to get in a better defensive position. That is uh, Schumacher. He'll be running anyway. There he goes in a 3-2 pitch. Hit in the air, but out of play. Schumacher got things going for the Cardinals as a pinch hitter against Villanueva. It is tough to be a big league manager, and there's so many things that go into a game that you can second guess. And that is the beauty of this sport, that anybody watching at home or here at the ballpark, you're, you're managing with Tony La Russa, you're managing with Ken Maka. 110 pitches, do you bring out par? Do I keep him in? Do I pitch to pools? A 3-2. Base hit into left. Albert hits one more time. You can hear a smattering of applause. <laughs> Ones at state. And I would I would assume there's as many uh, Brewers fans that want to see Albert swing the bat one more time as Cardinal fans here. And there's a lot of Cardinal fans. So two outs and two on. Pools with one base hit. That was the double last inning. One guy for sure did not want to see pools, and he's standing on the pitcher's mound right now. Couldn't I have just gotten Joe Thurston? Now I got to face pools. You don't want to think that way if you're a pitcher. If you're a pitcher and now you have to face him and you've already just filled your head with negative thoughts. And then there's this thing called reality. <laughs> And you have to face him with. And as I said a, a thousand times, the fun of competing is in this one at bat, this game inside a game. I'm facing the best hitter on the planet, but I've got a chance to be better than him for this one at bat. And Pujols hits it. That's a fair ball. Third baseman gets up and throws wide of the bag. So again, the defense coming back to cost the Brewers. We'll see if they give McGee his second air of the game. He's got six after his air back in the third inning. And goes there and backhands it, loses balance, comes up, and the throw is offline. But you can see they would have had him with a, with a, a strike thrown. They give Albert the single. I agree with that. I, I disagree with you, Al. I think he would have been safe. I gave him a single inning. You think he would have been safe with I the do. throw? I do. Oh, now, Dan. Now, here's... Oh, Dan. We got a couple things <laughs> to talk about here, Al. We saw earlier Prince not stretch. That plays into my thinking. Remember when he didn't stretch and well, came off the... If he stretches, I think he gets him out. If he doesn't stretch, safe. Well, I, I think... Now you're assuming he's never going to ever stretch. <laughs> Just going <laughs> what I saw earlier. Well, he tried to cheat that time. You know, he tried to sell it that coming off the bag, and I don't think he had to in that in that effort. Let's see if Ludwig can do some more damage as he picked up a three-run homer. Now you tell me that Albert was going to be safe. Oh, I need a stretch on that one, Al. <laughs> I'm happy for Albert getting the base hit. And then that, another way it goes, when you get a, a terrific hitter, he gets all the benefit of the doubt. I'm stretching my statement as we watch replays, too. I, I, I think you are. <laughs> Where's Todd Well, Todd, oh, Todd Worrell when I need to, to help my argument? I understand. Where's the fizzle between us? You know what? <laughs> That's only you and Jim Hayes. <laughs> Jim who? Jim will be with us tomorrow in Chicago. He's got the post-game show coming up. One-two pitch. Dan, you know what? I got a great idea. I'm assuming the Cardinals are going to have, and Pinheiro are going to have a one-two-three ninth inning, and they win this game. First game of the series, we were wearing black. 
third game of the series we're wearing black. So guess what we're going to be wearing tomorrow? A little the, good luck is what you're saying, huh? Lucky black shirts. Two and two. Ludwig pops it up, but that should find the seats, and it will. Yeah. That's four rows deep. Good thing I brought three of the black shirts on this trip. Oh, absolutely, and I know you're always trying to play the angles and get the edge. Yeah, I mean, it's just got to go with a hot hand. Ludwig swinging the bat really well right now. The only thing we can remember is the three-run home run. Look at those shadows now. Base is loaded. Cardinals have stranded five on the day, and they lead it five to one. A two-two. Just got a piece. First 26 games back, it's worth repeating. He was hitting 165 in those games, but things have changed now for Ludwig. His timing has been much better. He's seeing the ball. You see the walks that he's starting to get. He's driving the ball at a double last night. Also walked in in game one. He walked and had two base hits with a home run and a single. Two two. Sends us to the bottom of the ninth. Five one Cardinals. Joel Pinheiro, eight innings in our Budweiser player of the game. Three hits, one run. It's been earned in three strikeouts. Now, he has pitched into the ninth in two other games and gone the distance. Complete games, Pinheiro with two, Carpenter with one, Kyle Lowe's with one. Complete games this season for the Cardinals. His first was against Chicago back on May 19th. Most recently, on the road at City Field in New York, a 3-0 shutout and a two-hitter against the Mets. The other two were both shutouts. But here he allowed the one run in the fifth inning. Still only three hits allowed. And that was just his 86th pitch of the afternoon. Here is Rivera. Matt Gamble is on deck and only 24 balls out of the 86 pitches. Gamble will be a pinch hitter and then we'll see Craig Consul, then Hardy. And if you get to him, then Broad and Fielder. And once again, no walks. Where did that come from? I don't remember his control being this good. No. I think it's just the fact that he's healthy. He's going out there and just, you know, pounding, believing in that ability to pound the bottom of the strike zone. Ryan Franklin is warming up as insurance. Two balls, one strike. Rivera twice is grounded out to short. And he rips it down the left field line. Wow. Foul. So if you're Tony, you watch and evaluate how he starts this inning. You give him some leeway, but you've got your insurance out there getting loose. And it's, you know, once again, it's, you don't, in my mind, I don't, if I'm committed to get Brian Franklin up, if he walks a man, I'd bring him in, even if it's not a safe situation. This game is too important to let slip away. Two, you know, it's two games in the standings. And a call third strike. Rivera knew it. Four strikeouts for Pinheiro this afternoon. So look at where Molina set up outside. And look at that ball just tail. It starts outside and just tails right over the middle of the plate. If you're the opposing team, your game plan, as you see Gamble dig in and he homered last night in game two of this series, you have to be ready right from the get-go early in the count because Joel is around the strike zone so much. No, no need to wait. You know, the first pitch that, you know, usually when you have a sinker ball pitcher, you try to get them to elevate the ball. If it's up, you swing at it. One and you, one. If you see it, you know, thigh high, you don't swing at it because it, the bottom's going to fall out of it. And you're going to be just pounding it in the ground if you hit it. Cardinals.
Cardinals, if they hold on, would go to seven games above the 500 mark at 47 and 40. Drop Milwaukee to 44 and 41. Still two outs to go. This series, Gamble one for four with that home run and two RBIs as he got a start last night. Two and two, and you talked about earlier that in the series, this would be the guy they would not part with to go get a Roy Halladay, but the thinking apparently has changed maybe. Yeah, I think so because McGee has come on the scene and, you know, a highly touted prospect, but he's not playing every day. He's only got three home runs, including his one last night. You know, I, but right now, you might change your idea about Parra. You might have been willing to put him in a deal. You got your start, Parra and, and Gamble, and then maybe a minor league prospect or two. Long look by Joel Pinheiro. Time called. Two and two. Joel Pinheiro. Boy, is he good today or what? Second strikeout, and that's number five in the game. Swing and a miss by Gamble, and we're back to the top of the lineup. 15 pitches, the most in any inning. 97 on the day. And it's up to Council to extend the game. Two outs, nobody on. First pitch outside. Council today fly to center. He's grounded out to second hit into a double play Prince fielder with two of the three hits today for Milwaukee Mike Cameron the other an RBI base hit to drive in Prince back in the fifth Cardinals trailed one to nothing all the way up until the eighth inning and then they picked up five runs as Manny Parra was lifted Sure one thing Tony LaRusso is going to talk about is he it's thankful you win the series, but he's going to remind his guys that, hey, you scored only one inning yesterday, only one inning today. Good point. You've got to pile on. Ideally, you want to score in, in four innings per game. Puts a lot of pressure on that pitcher, but as you said, Pinheiro did an excellent job of not worrying about his run support, just control what he could. Here's a ground ball. This could do it. Brendan Ryan. Loves throws. Cardinals take two of three. Pinheiro, a complete game win, five to one this afternoon here in Milwaukee. What a story he's turned out to be. Wainwright and Pinheiro in this series. The only time we saw the bullpen was in game two. As Franklin came in the Wainwright game and then finishing it off, of course, and Pinheiro goes the distance here this afternoon. So we saw just a brief visit by Franklin in game one, bullpen in game two, all Pinheiro in game three.